Um, I also like hearing about um, Goldfinger. Um, tell yeah. us a little bit about the story that you uncovered about Goldfinger. So through the recording session sheets, there are all these like filed away handwritten notes about the actual recording session. So we knew that I heard the story about Goldfinger, but I wasn't sure, you know, we didn't have any interviews or something, you know, we hadn't found anything that actually um, told the story. And then I could see from the recording sessions that um, Jimmy Page played guitar on the Goldfinger, um, John Barry Bond session. And then we found this great interview with Dame Shirley Bassey and basically he was able to tell the story of how she, you know, they played it and they had the, on the, on the projection, they had the end credits and Shirley Bassey had to hold that end note until the end credits had finished. And she was like, the story goes, she collapsed on the floor. She held the note, but she gave it everything and she collapsed on the floor, and it, you know, afterwards. So it's this beautiful drama. <laughs> that, that was an amazing and she's such an incredible you know yeah. talent I was so happy to be able to include her in the documentary so yeah it's a really a strong story yeah yeah and Pink Floyd is another yeah. group that, that got their start there I think they were known as the tea set initially the tea set <laughs> and I, I was really um I was I was keen to sort of uh, include Sid Barrett because he was such a talent and one of the ones that started the band and you know in interviewing Roger Waters and David Gilmore you could really tell their love for him and that they thought he was a creative genius and I think in both of the interviews you can see how much they miss him and how sad they were to have lost him in that way um, and then it goes into Dark Side of the Moon, which I had not realized had been recorded there till I started doing the research. So um, that was very innovative as well. And that sort of shows more the side of recording when the artist is getting power. So they produced again there, they started off with a producer, but then they were so innovative in how they were recording. They kind of were producing themselves and so experimental in the process. Mm. And also, sort of showing the creative differences you you know famously they had creative differences but I think in doing that it really made the album what it could be because I think they were in competition with each other and they really pushed each other creatively and that comes across in a positive way in the actual album yeah then the the studio had went through um, a bit of financial problems and started moving into doing movie stuff and working with Hollywood more. And of course, Star Wars, uh, the theme was was um, produced there. Tell a little bit of that story about how, um, you know, George Lucas came to use Abbey Road and what he got out of it. So Ken Townsend was the manager of Abbey Road and Studio One, which is the biggest studio there, um, where the orchestral recordings were being made, it fell into, um, you know, a lot of the orchestral strong pieces had been recorded. So it wasn't being booked as a studio space and it was lying empty a lot of the time. And it's a huge space. They were like, what are we going to do? We're going to need to sort of maybe, you know, those letters um, where they were thinking of maybe making it into a car park or cutting, you know, making it into much smaller spaces. And just in the nick of time, Ken Townsend got word that the recording studio outside of London that was doing a lot of film scores was, had lost its lease and was closing down. So he got in touch and he managed to do the contract to bring that, the film scores to Abbey Road. But it was like just at the perfect moment. Um, and one of the first films that went there was Indiana Jones, which hadn't been released. And... John Williams and Spielberg and uh, and from there it just flew it was like Star Wars it was Lord of the Rings it's Harry Potter it's, you know you think of it to this day all of the, the a lot of the big main movie soundtracks are recorded there also one of the great things about Abbey Road is like it's like the London Philharmonic or you know the the, the 
John Williams talks about it. It's recording with those orchestras. The people that the work in, in London and at Abbey Road are people that, that you know, people will travel to, to come and work in that space. And the acoustics are, they haven't, they're clever. They haven't messed with Studio One and Studio Two. So the acoustics, the feel of that space and the sound it gives is the same now as it was then. Yeah, yeah. And in later years, uh, even Oasis uh, recorded there. And I, I, I gather from your documentary, they were asked to leave at a certain point. <laughs> yeah, I kind of love that, that Colette, I mean, Colette was like Abbey Road, you know, Abbey Road's not the type of place to sort of make, ask people to leave. They really do work with the artists. So I think, I think that, you know, that, pretty bad. <laughs> that the way were challenging at that time. I mean, they had a lot of paparazzi following them and they were, you know, maybe they were being a little crazy, but then they came back to record their last album there and, their, and then Abbey Road sort of made a little chill out area for them and they were a bit more prepared for them the second time. Um, but I was able to interview Noel Gallagher and Liam Gallagher I mean, separately, but it, it meant a lot to me to have both of their voices included and to have, you know, them in that section because, um, you know, it's strong. And that 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 part of, of uh, recording history for Abbey Road was sort of coming round full circle because it was bands coming in that were influenced by the previous recordings historically like the Beatles and Pink Floyd, it was sort of the, the, the next generation coming in and recording there and sort of pushing boundaries still, but being influenced by the original recordings. Thanks for watching the You Interview channel. With over 3,000 original celebrity videos, we have one of the largest collections of celebrity interviews anywhere. So remember to like and comment on our videos and subscribe to the channel. If you want to get more involved, you can become a member of the channel. Membership has its perks. You can see exclusive celebrity videos and get the opportunity to ask our celebrity guests questions. We can't wait to hear from you.